this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the cables in your PC. Now this is something that obviously is a bit tricky for beginners, and can be a bit of a faff to get used to where everything plugs in. So I'm going to show you step by step all the different things that you need to do on a number of different motherboards. But the idea here is basically to show you the essential cables that you need to plug in from your PC case and from your power supply unit and other things. But I'm gonna start with the PC case cables because obviously they're the most important in terms of the power button pack cable, for example, 3.5 mil connection, USB connections, and more. There are obviously a lot of cables while you get to the end of it. But as you see, when you open the case up, in this case is the NZX TH9 Elite, but the cables are basically the same from every case that you're building in. You have HD audio, USB, 3.5 mil, front panel connections, and more. And all of these need plugging in if the PC is going to work properly. So I'm going to show you where to plug those in and how to do it. And I'm going to do so outside the case with a motherboard on display like this so that you can see where they go and each step of it and get a clear picture of it. But obviously do this once it's all installed in the PC. We're going to start off with HD audio. This is the 3.5 mil connection where you plug in a headset or headphones to your PC, usually on top. Or on the front. This runs to the back left of the motherboard or bottom left and you can see here it's marked AAFP but it'll otherwise be things like HD audio and audio connections and they're usually on the bottom left and reference your motherboard manual because you might find a reference to that. The next is front panel connection. This is the power button and it also does other things like LEDs and reset switches and sometimes you'll find it in one single connection like this, marked F panel. And you usually find the F panel in the bottom right of the motherboard. And you'll see that it has HDD LED, power LED, power switch, reset buttons, all sort of put into one connector. Now in this case, it's really easy because there are multiple pins, but you'll notice that one of the pins is missing and that same pin is also missing on the cable. So it's actually impossible to plug it in the wrong way around. So you basically just slip that in there nice and straightforward. Now it is worth noting that this may vary on some motherboards and some cases. On some PC cases, you'll find that instead of one connector, you have loads of little ones, which can make life a little bit more intimidating. They look like this. So they're split out into different things. You'll see HDD, LED, power LED, reset switch and power switch. Obviously power switch is your power button. Reset switch resets the PC and more. Now, if you look at the motherboard itself, you'll see the markings on there for plus and minus. So that's plus point and the minus point of where these cables go. On the cable itself, hopefully you'll see a plus and minus sign on each of them as well. And that should make it logical and where things plug in. If you don't, then you will also notice that if you look at the back of them, there's a little pointy arrow on there. That arrow represents the plus side of this cable. So all you've got to do is line that up with the positive markings on the motherboard. Now, if you don't see these markings on the motherboard, refer to the motherboard manual because that will show you where things plug in and the logic of it. If we can see here, if we take this cable and we plug it in at the bottom left, it's lining up with that plus sign with the plus sign on the motherboard. So the plus sign on the cable, plus sign on the motherboard, that's lining up the positive and negative with those. You can see the markings on either and that'll ensure that we've got it the right way around. Now, obviously, if you do this the wrong way around, these things won't function properly. So if you do it with the reset switch or power switch, for example, you might find your PC doesn't turn on. So if your PC is not turning on, it could be something that simple. But you can just look out for those markings on each of these cables. And they are fiddly. They definitely are fiddly. You can buy adapters that you can put these into an adapter and then plug it into the motherboard, which can make life easier. But if you've got a case where you have to sort of force these in, then this can be a little bit more tricky because you've got to separate them out. And obviously trying to work out where they go can be a bit more difficult. But the labeling can really help and especially that little arrow. So watch out for that little arrow on the back if you're struggling to work out which goes where because that arrow represents the plus sign, as I said. So that's a positive connection. So the power LEDs, those and the hard disk drive LEDs, those obviously give you lights representing what's working on the PC. And the power switch and reset switch are the more important ones because they're obviously power the buttons to turn it on and to restart your PC if you need to. So just make sure those are plugged in at a minimum and that will then sort that out. The next is the USB connection. So this blue fat one is the standard USB-A connections and then the gold and silver one is USB-C. So the fat blue one plugs in on the right hand side just below the large 24 pin power supply cable. We'll get to that in a bit. But you can see that in this case, it plugs straight down into the motherboard. And there's a little clip that basically needs to be inserted in there to make sure it clicks in place properly. 
just like in the real world, USB-C can be put in either way around. So that's easy. That's just a little connector that pushes in there. Now it's worth noting, I'm going to show this again on a different motherboard, that sometimes it varies. So you can see the USB-C is still next to the 24 pin connector here on the right hand side of this NZXT motherboard, but the USB-A differs ever so slightly. So instead of plugging in straight down from the top, it actually plugs in sideways or sideways on pushing in. But again, there's a little plastic bulge on that cable which sticks out. So you need to sort of line up with a hole on the socket. But otherwise, different motherboards, same logic. HD audio goes in the bottom left for your 3.5 mil connection and the front panel goes in the bottom right. Once again you'll need to make sure your negative and positive connections are the right way around but hopefully you have this single cable connection. This does seem to be becoming the norm and it makes life a lot easier in connecting those power cables up. Now I want to talk a bit more about other connections in the case. Now I've done a lot of videos on how to wire up fans. You can see the NZXT AF120 RGB duo fans for example and I've done videos on in-depth guides on the RGB and power connections on those. So I'll link to those in the description. I've also done this with Corsair and Lee and Lee and the sort of different connections you need. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that here, but you'll see that you can connect up both the RGB to an RGB controller and then the fan power directly to the motherboard. So it's fairly straightforward, but it varies a lot. So it's not worth me going into a lot of depth on here. Now I wanna show you the power connections. So I've done detailed guides on power supply units and this is an NZXT one. I'm showing you the power connections for it, but I'm gonna do it here because basically they're the same from PSU to PSU, from case to case, from motherboard to motherboard. The logic is the same and you need to plug in the same cables. So this is a modular power supply unit, which means you plug in the cables you need to use and only the ones you need to use. So that makes life a lot easier. You will start with the 24 pin power supply cable, which is the fattest one included in the box. That plugs into the motherboard 20 plus four connection at the top here. And you can see in this instance, it's split into two different parts. So both of those need to be plugged into this. The other end of that then connects up and plugs in to your motherboard. Now I'd recommend doing this with all the cables plugged into the PSU before you install it in your case. But here again, I'm demoing how to install the other end on the motherboard outside the case, just so you can see it a lot easier. So you can see the 24 pin plugs in here on the top right. Obviously don't do this. You'd want to install the motherboard in the case before you plug in the cables, but this makes it easier for me to show where they go in under better lighting conditions and making it easier for you to see. There's a little clip here that needs to be pushed in. So it basically hooks over a point on the motherboard and holds that cable in place. That one's the most important because it'll ensure that your motherboard powers on. But you may also need some CPU power connectors. And you can see this is an eight pin power connector connects up where it says CPU and PCIe. It's marked on the cable and it's also marked on the power supply unit. The other end of that then goes and plugs into your motherboard. Now, sometimes you'll find that you have two eight pin connectors. Sometimes it's one eight pin and one four. Sometimes you might even have three eight pin connectors. You can see on this one on the top left of the motherboard, we've got one eight pin and one four pin. Fairly straightforward. So those two cables that I've just plugged in, one plugs in on the left hand side. The other one then splits into two parts and plugs into the four part power connector. So you then have one eight pin and one four pin on this. But otherwise you might use two eight pins. So you might just keep this together and plug that in. Sometimes I've seen this power connector on the bottom of a motherboard, but usually it's on the top left. So we've now got two main power connectors for the motherboard itself and the 24 pin and then the eight pin power connectors. Now the next important cable is the SATA power connector. So this gives you control and power for things like fan power controllers, RGB lighting nodes, hard disk drives and SSDs. It plugs into the SATA connector on the power supply unit down here in the bottom left, for example. And you'll notice that it's sort of daisy chainable because there are several connectors on the cable. So you can actually theoretically plug in multiple different things into this one cable and then all get power. You may use several of these connectors because you might have several drives or several fan controllers or multiple RGB lighting nodes or lighting strips and other things. So you need to plug those cables in to make sure that this has the power. This is a very versatile cable because there's a lot of things that it gets used for, including something like this RGB and fan power controller from NZXT. So this powers both the fan speed and the RGB on those AF120 RGB duo fans that I showed. So that's another example of the things they need to plug in. So you can see lots of things to plug in there potentially, and you will find that included with your power supply unit. Now the next one is graphics cards. I'm gonna show two different variations here because there are some changes coming with a new connector, and this is 
the latest and greatest power supply unit that includes a special 600 watt cable for NVIDIA's 40 series and a Blov GPU. But here I'm showing you the connections for more traditional PCIe graphics connections. You might find there are several cables included, which are the traditional ones, but they are actually different in their design. So you will see that there are two with a single connector on it and then two with daisy chain connectors. So the pig's tail sort of style to them. So one end plugs in to your PSU and then the other has two connectors on it, which are two eight pin connectors on there. And then the other two on the left hand side that you can see in this clip have just a single connector that connects up to the graphics card. So for demo purposes, I'm going to be using my Gigabyte 3090 GPU, which requires two 8-pin power connectors. Now, I'd recommend if you can using the two connectors that don't have that pigtail effect on them, just single straight connectors from the PSU into your graphics card. This will give you the most amount of power and ensure that it runs with maximum performance and gives you the best possible results out of it. So we use those two cables that I mentioned. So separate them out from the other ones and then you plug in the one end which isn't split into your PSU and then the other end you'll see that it has PCIe markings on it and you'll also notice that it's split in two so this is similar to the CPU one in that it breaks apart but as standard is set with either six or eight so you have to push it together if you've got an eight pin. Now you may find some variants in some of the GPUs some require one eight pin and one six pin some require just one eight pin some require three eight pins so it really does vary depending on what you're going to do. But if you're using one like I am, you have to push these two clips together to make sure that they're held in place nicely and then push it all the way in until it clicks into place. And that then ensures that you'll get the power that you need to your GPU. If that connector is loose, you may find that your GPU doesn't run properly or doesn't give you maximum performance. So it could be something as simple as that if you're suffering from issues. So plug in your PCIe cable, so the second one, and again, repeat this process. So just make sure you push those clips together nicely and slide it into place. Now, this is obviously 3090, just requires two connectors on it, but you may require another one. So if you've got a graphics card that needs three 8-pin power connectors, then you will have to use the other cable, which is obviously that pigtail one with the daisy chain connector on it. So plug that in, same sort of logic, into the power supply unit end, and then you've got this two connector. It's not going to look as neat, but you do have the potential there. You can see that you can install more so there is definitely enough for most modern graphics cards so i've shown you the process outside the case obviously just a quick demo of what it looks like inside so you plug your graphics card into the top slot on the motherboard to give you the best performance because that will give you the most cpu lanes and then you've got to run the cable from underneath or somewhere and plug it in now make sure you don't put too much tension on this cable and again once again make sure all those cables are pushed together and seated nicely and held in with those clips so they are all connected up because it's quite easy to accidentally not have the full connection when you've got the you've got to push those two clips together sometimes the couple of ones that are separated might not be fully pushed in so pay attention to what's going on there the next is for the 40 series graphics cards from nvidia so this is gigabyte 4070 ti which has that standard separate connector now Included with this GPU is usually a cable that's split in two and an adapter. You can find multiple different ones, different manufacturers. You sometimes got two, three or four eight pin power connectors for your traditional that then run into that single connector. But with this Corsair PSU, you get one single cable that plugs into the graphics card. So it looks a lot neater. You'll notice that the cable is also flat and easier to manipulate into your case. It has two power connectors that plug into the PSU. So you've got to plug them into the PCI e slash cpu connectors on there so on the right hand side and then that cable would then run and plug into your graphics card at the other end this cable is nice because it makes things a lot neater on the front side because you don't have to use the adapter that it comes in the box with your graphics card instead you can use this one but it's very important that you push this all the way in once again you've got to make sure it's seated properly people have been having problems with some of their gpus where the power cable is melted and that's because they've not put it in properly it's not fully seated and clipped all the way in or they put too much tension on the cable pulling it from one side to the other or up and down just putting a lot of tension on there so take care with it but don't worry too much because i haven't had any issues as long as you're careful not to put too much tension on there and it's fully seated at both ends you should be fine it's worth noting that some of the more recent power supply units have that same connector on both ends so the psu end also has that adapter on it with the special connector on it so you've got a single power connection on one end and then a single on the other to the 40 series this will still supply enough power and it just means you've got far less hassle but you do need to make sure 
both ends are fully secured and seated. Once you're sure of all the cables you're going to need, I'd recommend plug them all into your power supply unit before you go about installing the PSU in the case. This makes life a lot easier because it's much easier to plug these ends in now when it's outside the build than it is when you've got it inside the case and you've got to try and fit your hand in there and work out what cables go where. So this is definitely worth doing and will make your life easier. So you can see this is most of the sort of logic of the connections, both in the case and the power supply, but I'm going to show you some more now. And obviously you would actually do all the things I've just shown you in the case after you've installed in both the power supply unit and the motherboard. So we seat the motherboard in then and do the power cables. But I wanted to be able to show you how to do it outside because it's a little bit easier to understand. So now I'm at a stage where I've installed the motherboard and also the cooler. And this is NZXT Kraken Z723. Now obviously the cooler you're going to be using may vary. So it's really difficult to tell you exactly what to do. I've done guides on this, but you might be using an air cooler, for example. All-in-one coolers have a connection which basically runs to the AIO pump header on a motherboard. Air coolers sometimes connect up to the CPU fan header. Sometimes you may connect your all-in-one cooler to both those connections. <laughs> so it's hard to give you an exact sort of idea on what connectors go where. But you can see on this one, there's a breakout cable which has connections for three different connectors for the fan power. So you connect up your fans to that. And then there's a separate cable which runs to the top of the motherboard and connects up there to the all-in-one pump header. That then gives your motherboard control over the power of the pump and the speed of it and things like that. And it's a fairly straightforward connection. But these sorts of connections that you'll need for your CPU fan or for your all-in-one cooler will be at the top right of basically every motherboard. They're very rarely anywhere else. Sometimes I've seen it just below the pump head itself, so just below the CPU. In the bottom left corner of that but it's in the middle of the motherboard but most instances on most motherboards i've seen which has been a lot now it's usually in the top right so it's pretty easy to find if you struggle with finding any of these you usually find a little menu in your motherboard manual which will show you where but here you can say cpu fan and aio pump so the aio pump is all in one pump connection and if you're using a cpu fan which is separate different thing then you do that now this pump also has a usb connection and this is different from those front panel usb connectors i showed you a minute ago because this needs to run to the bottom of the motherboard instead so it doesn't control the buttons or anything else so it doesn't give you access to the front panel usb connections instead it connects up to the motherboard so what we're doing here with this one is basically allowing the motherboard to talk to the pump head and that's because this has got a display on it but it also does other things so that runs to the bottom and it plugs in down here where it says USB 2 underscore 1 and USB 2 underscore 2. You may find one, two or three of these USB connections on there and you might have to plug in multiple devices. For example, fan power controllers, RGB lighting nodes, pump heads and other things often plug into this connection and you may need a splitter cable in order to do so as well. Now if you've installed a lot of different devices like all-in-one coolers, fan controllers, RGB lighting hubs and more you might end up with multiple different USB connections and as I said you probably only got one or two or if you're really lucky three USB connections on the bottom but there is an alternative option. You can purchase something like this NZXT hub which is a USB hub and it's an additional purchase but is one worth getting. Corsair also does one similar. Essentially, this allows you to plug one single cable into the USB hub that then connects onto the single USB port on your motherboard. And you can then plug in four different devices to it. So that includes fan controllers, RGB hubs, and all sorts of other things. They can all be plugged into this. And then that obviously expands the number of ports that you have access to. This thing is pretty affordable. And it's also magnetic, which is pretty nifty. So it just clips to the back of your case with relative ease. And it just means that you can connect a lot of more devices easily. So you can see here, for example, I've got four USB devices I need to connect up. I've only got two ports on the motherboard. So I connect up four different devices to it. That goes into a single port and that still leaves another port free as well. This is a great way to do it. There are cheaper options and more expensive ones probably but this is one that i found is pretty effective and reasonably easy to set up this makes life a lot easier when you're getting into more complicated builds with loads of rgb fans and loads of rgb lighting and loads of other things going on and it just means that you can just set this up pretty simply now i'll leave links to this in the description so you can find it and make your build a little bit easier it's not an essential purchase though necessarily it depends on what you're doing with your case and with your build you can buy splitters as an alternative and sometimes some devices are even supplied with them this one does require power though 
is worth noting. So you do need a SATA power connection. That's that flat connector that I showed you earlier on that connects to the power supply unit. Having power means that it draws less power from the motherboard, which is how you can actually fit four connectors into one. So it is essential that you plug into the PSU, but otherwise it's fairly simple to install and it does just make life a lot easier. So it is worth considering. Now you've seen the logic of most of where things plug in. The next stage is to finalize the build by plugging in the power supply unit and connecting everything up. We need to install the PSU so that the fan is facing outwards, either to the bottom of the case or externally so that it can pull air in and keep it cool. And then obviously we need to run those cables through and secure them and screw the power supply in so it's fully secured in there. Make sure all the cables are seated in properly and clipped all the way in. Otherwise, some things might happen like it might not boot properly. Once that's done, you then run those cables round to the front and obviously plug them in as I showed you already. And I'm going to quickly demonstrate some of that again, just so you can see the logic of it. So the 24 pin power connector here on the right hand side runs underneath that cable tray and plugs in there. That's the big fat one. It's a bit difficult to manipulate into this position and it's harder to see here, obviously, than what I showed you earlier on, which is why I did it outside the case. And then you plug in those two connectors in the top left for the CPU power, the eight pin and the four pin. And again, this will vary from motherboard to motherboard, but the logic's fairly similar. And then we tidy things up a bit at the back, make sure those cables are tight and sort of tied down and out of the way as much as possible, which isn't always terribly easy, depending on how many cables you've got, how many fans you've installed and other things. Don't forget to connect up any SATA power connections that you need. So as I said earlier on, fan power controllers, SSDs, hard disk drives, anything like that might require this SATA connector. Then we run those USB connections through to the front again. Now I want to show you what to do with SSDs and hard disk drives. So the logic is the same here. The installation will vary depending on the case. So this is just a sort of background shot of what happened with this case where you install it on a tray and then put it into your case. But I want to show you the logic of the cables for them. So hard disk drives, traditional larger platter drives and the smaller 2.5 inch SSDs require two cables, one for power and one for data transfers. The data cable should come with your motherboard and it looks like this it has a small metal clip on it that pushes into the drive whether it's ssd or hard disk drive and then you've got that flat sata power cable which connects up to the power supply unit that cable is daisy chainable so you can connect up multiple drives to it if necessary and then obviously you need to make sure the other end is connected to psu and then you'll look for these l-shaped connectors on the side of your motherboard usually on the right hand side you'll find four or maybe more and then you connect the other end of the data cable into there. If you ensure both those cables are connected, so power and data, you, sh you should then be able to access the drives from Windows and from your BIOS. Now I'm sure everything's plugged in and set up, as I've shown you in all the different steps here. I've obviously covered a lot, so if you found it useful, hopefully your PC should power on nicely, and you can thank me by subscribing, liking and commenting, and maybe heading over to the Discord to say hello. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.